So the original definition of ergonomics that I was familiar with was the science of fitting the task to the human person. And if you go online and look up how to set up your workstation, you will get a lot of diagrams, a lot of advice. And I think we need to look at this in terms of the, does this really fit the human body? So let's look at what's uh, coming from the National Institutes of Health. We've already talked about the problems with the seated posture that you see where the person is sitting in a square uh, configuration where they're in a flat chair and their elbows are bent or at a 90 degree angle. So they say, um, can the height of the chair be adjusted to allow you to sit with your feet flat on the floor? And they suggest in many instances that you use a footrest. I would argue that everyone deserves a chair with a pedestal that allows them to sit with their feet flat on the floor. And it's not that difficult. Manufacturers make different uh, pedestals. So pretty much everyone can get this. If you have ever tried to sit with your foot on a footrest, it's very annoying after a while. So I really don't recommend that. Um, recommend. They recommend a neutral wrist position. And I have done this for many years and very, very, very few people know what a neutral wrist position actually is, especially when it's moving. So I'm wondering how useful this advice really is unless you are taught what a neutral wrist is and taught good technique by someone who knows what good technique entails. So then they say, are your keyboard, mouse, and work surface at your elbow height? We've already gone over that in the previous segment. We know that having the elbow bent and the palms down is in and of itself a very strong risk factor for repetitive strain injury. So the 90 degree angle is not great advice. It's better if you lower it to greater than 90 degrees, but even that is still causing the ulnar nerve to go around a corner and the tendons and muscles to twist out of the Blix curve that's ideal for them. So uh, this is not really the best advice. Does the keyboard come close enough to the edge of the desk allowing space for the wrist to rest on the desk surface? This is very bad advice. If you rest your wrist, that automatically leads to what we call dorsiflexion. And that can really cause major problems in the tendons, in the tunnels. So you really don't want to rest your wrists on anything when you're keying or using a computer. And people say, well, you need a wrist rest because it's tiring. Well, tiring. Let's think about tiring. If you're putting the body in a position where it's being fatigued and then propping it up, it's kind of like trying to walk when you're supported by things. Your muscles are going to be losing strength and it's, it's really a better idea not to put yourself in that position in the first place and find better ways to work. Is your mouse at the same level and as close as possible to your keyboard? Well, even when you do that, you're still in a very awkward position and it's really better not to use a mouse. It's overusing one extremity, the digits of that extremity, and I have had countless people tell me that when they injured themselves using a mouse, they used the mouse with their opposite hand so they keep working, and then they injured that arm. So I don't recommend uh, the mouse in general. I actually don't have one. Um, and they actually suggest from the NIH, they suggest that you rest your dominant hand and use your non-dominant hand. And as I just explained, that's how you could injure the non-dominant hand. So um, some of the other advice isn't too bad, but they're still not taking into account the sheer number of hours that you spend at a computer. The co-author on my first book said that you were in the danger zone for injury with as little as two hours of computer use per day. So there's no mention of posture 
There's no mention of physical fitness or conditioning or technique retraining. And all of these things are very important when it comes to preventing an injury. We're going to be talking about fitting the task to the person rather than vice versa. All of these considerations need to be taken into account. That we need to look at what is natural for the human body. The human body was meant to move, it was meant to walk, it was meant to do a variety of postures on a continuous basis, not sit in a fixed position for hours and hours and hours on end. That's very injurious. So I'm just going to suggest here that we need to take a look at the tools because we are basically asking the human body to conform to tools that are putting it in a risky position.